Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And Courtney, how are you? Happy birthday! Uh, thanks. It's my birthday. Also, just for the visual viewers, um, I'm not naked. I just somehow found a dress that's the exact same fucking color as my wall. And I'm shiny. <laughs> for birthday. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm in a tailspin. I, uh, put in my two weeks notice at work today and I'm moving. Um, when this, when does this come out? This a week will... and a half from when this moving, I'm moving again. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, this, yeah, this will come out on the 7th of April. Okay. So at the end of this week, I will no no this comes out no this will come out on easter happy first. easter everyone happy easter. happy easter i will have been moved by the time this comes out um today i'm in panic that i'm gonna make it but by the time you hear this i'll have made it yeah um and then the next week i will be moving again <laughs> Unless somebody wants to hire me with a lot of money, then like, like a, I like will stop lot. moving and I will yeah. stay in one place or like roughly stay in one place. I'm not good at staying in one place, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I am just in Which the Which is weird because of, you've been in one place for quite some time now. I know this is the second longest I've ever been somewhere now because I was in Brooklyn for three and a half years. And that was the longest I'd ever been somewhere. And then I've been here three years. And that's the second longest I've ever been somewhere. Yeah. Like, other than my parents' house, this is the longest I've ever been anywhere. I, just, um, my, I have this, like, spot on my chest that is bothering me. And I scratched it. But the problem is now I keep touching it because I'm seeing it. And it's <laughs> making it worse because it hurts because I scratched it. And then I just had a weird muscle spasm. And so I'm just like actively falling apart in a way that I wasn't yeah. five minutes ago before we started recording. And I so I'm so sorry <laughs> for all the facial expressions. No, have you ever had like a lung muscle uh -huh. spasm? Uh huh. I like stopped breathing for it's a not second. Pleasant. Yeah, I uh, as part of cleaning up my apartment and packing, I have stirred up all the dust and dander that is hidden under surfaces, and also can't breathe now. So um but it's fine so yeah if you want to pay millions of dollars i will stay still um if not i don't know where i'll be anytime i see or talk <laughs> to any of you for the next rest of my life um yeah. so we'll see so that's how i am i'm gonna make it but um barely so how are you i'm good um as you know it's my birthday um and so this weekend in order to celebrate okay. my birthday um I have this really wonderful fiance who just like desperately wants to do nice things for me and try to take care of me and thinks that everything he does is not enough and somehow feels like he's like still not doing enough no matter what he's doing. And so he spent the entire weekend being like, what would you like to do? It's your weekend. It's your birthday. What do you want to do? And you guys have seen my mental ability to make decisions as of late. And, um, I literally just kept saying nothing. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do anything. I, I don't, I don't want to move. I don't want to talk it to people. I don't, I want to do nothing. Um, which of course just made him feel like he wasn't doing anything for my birthday. And he is like a, 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 a gift. Like his love language is definitely like acts of service and like gift giving. He like, he can't, he feels like he's not doing enough if he's not just like giving me things. Like yeah. he got, he got me flowers and um like three presents and then today because it was my actual birthday he also got me like a bunch more snacks and food and things and just was mm -hmm. like i was like okay the the present that he got me though i don't have it here because it's at his apartment but it is the most amazing thing in the entire world it is a blanket like a fleece blanket but it has a hood and I the love hood, those, yes. The hood is a Highland cow head. So when I put I it on... How you haven't sent me a picture of this yet. I put it on and I just was like, I'm a cow. And I was giggling and running around the apartment. And Doug was like, I don't know what just happened. He like 
locked himself in his room because he could not figure out what was going on because I literally was like running around was like "Ah!" it's a magic blanket it transforms you um (laughs) I love it and we went we went to see John Christ on Friday oh how was that so good I yeah did he do the dad stuff or is he doing his other stuff still he's doing it's his new tour his new stuff so the emotion the emotional support tour so um my favorite was the number of times he was like republicans i am not your leader (laughs) (laughs) um no and he just his his openers were also like phenomenal it was just so good and I was like crying, laughing the whole time, like to the point where I apologized to, to the women in front of me because I was like cackling. It was, it was wonderful. That's so funny. And then Saturday, we just stayed home and had like charcuterie for dinner. Yes. And then yesterday, we went to a wedding show at a jeweler's and bought our wedding bands. And, and then we went and then we went to the Broadway market, which is like the big um, Polish Easter market. And we bought our Easter nice. egg and we had lunch with my parents and like did a bunch of shopping. And then we went to Olive Garden for dinner because he just I kept love saying, Olive Garden. I love Olive Garden. And he just kept asking me what I wanted to do for dinner. And he like could not fathom the fact that I didn't want to go anywhere. Like I didn't, we didn't go out for dinner Friday. We didn't go out for dinner Thursday. We didn't go out for dinner Saturday. So like Sunday, I woke up from my nap and I was like, fine, if you really feel the need to take me out and like feel like you're doing something, I would just like soup. Like <laughs> that's us. Oh, yes. So yeah, so that was, and then today I went to school and my students got me this cute little gift basket that had like a coffee mug and a bracelet and a bunch of just like cute teacher Aww. stuff. And then they also got me a six pack of Dr. Pepper and a Princess Leia Funko Pop because my kids know nice. me so well. That's it's amazing. so cute. Yeah. And then we watched Kung Fu Panda 3. So it was great. Oh, how hard. was it? Is that the new one? No, they mm-hmm. went to see as a whole class on a day where we had no school. My entire sixth grade class got together as a class to go on a field trip by themselves to see Kung Fu Panda 4 in the movie theater together. That's so today. Insane. Oh my God. I, the dad who was in charge of it, I was like, are you okay? Oh, absolutely not. Love and he was like, he, I mean, he's a pastor, so he was fine. He was like, yeah, no, oh, we're good. He knows. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Um, and so then today um the kung fu panda 3 is the only one that's on netflix so for movie day we watched that one but some of the kids had never seen the third one they'd only seen the first and second one before they saw the fourth one it's actually really cute so i think i've only seen the first one though um i had also only seen the first one until today but the third one was really good nice so oh i uh i also went to a show this week i forgot Did um, you? it was at 10 p.m on a friday and so i didn't plan to be awake then um yeah i went and saw this band called lonesome joy um they're pretty cool they're based out of nashville and uh my friend andrew who's a producer out here um who worked on this cover stuff with us uh invited me because he knows one of the guys in the band and we ended up i didn't get home to like 3 a.m and i was like i couldn't tell you the last time that wasn't like <laughs> south by or focalized it wasn't like a uh, conference for music yeah. showcases that i got home after 3 a.m <laughs> like every I, time i thought we were leaving we didn't we like would leave a building and i was like great i'll call my car and then like oh let's pop in here and i was like okay not calling my car yet and it was like three times that happened i could not i couldn't i wouldn't survive i the f- i the fact- i woke up i slept a lot saturday yeah um i Oh, I know what I was going to say. Speaking of shows, um, for those of you who listen to this podcast, and we're really, really, really waiting for the update on how much of the Shays season I got correct. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. And Courtney obviously knows already because I told her when it happened. But uh, I got I'm in five the of the seven shows. No. Four of the seven. Oh, I guessed eight shows, but there was actually only seven. Um. Mm-hmm. So I got three wrong, but really, yeah, no, wait. Oh, I, four of my, I got five right, but I got 
three wrong because I guessed eight shows. Right, right, right. Right, right. Um, I was like, I feel like you told me no. five you got right. Yes. Yes. So we, yeah, my number didn't make sense because I guessed more shows than we ended up having. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are, in fact, getting Some Like It Hot and Juliet shocked. Back to the Future. Those are the four normal ones that I got right. I got Lion King correct, but Lion King is not the special engagement. It's part of the season this year, which is interesting. Mm. So I have tickets for that. Um, But I also was 100% correct on the dates that the Lion King will be there. It will, in fact, cover both the day I was originally supposed to get married and the day I'm actually getting married. (laughs) <laughs> it will be nice. there both of it will be there both of those Saturdays. So I was correct that Disney stole my wedding. <laughs> um, yeah. Correct. 100%. Correct. So, that so I got only the, it's only makes sense that Disney would yeah. be the one to steal your wedding. Yeah. So I got those five correct. We are not getting Clue or Kimberly Akimbo. Right, right, right. Or Wicked. Those are the three mm-hmm. I did not get correct. No, wait, I must have yeah. Yeah, those are the three I didn't know. Yeah, those are the three. Mm-hmm. The three that we are getting instead of those. No, so we are still getting eight. Oh, are you? Yeah, we are still getting eight. There's still seven, seven in the regular season and one special. My brain said six and two, but it's actually seven and one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the three that I got wrong, two of them, I was not aware that they were going to be on tour. If I had known they were not on Playbill's list of things that were touring, if mm-hmm. I had known they were on tour, it would have changed my votes for one of them. One of the ones that I got would have, I would have put on my list because we are getting a beautiful noise. And if I Which had I known, think we talked about yeah, but you were we like, ta- I don't think it's touring because it's not on yes. Playbill. Like, okay, exactly. It was yeah. it was on my it was on my list. It was on the list from the theater, but not from Playbill. So it wasn't on my list of things that I guessed because it wasn't. On Playbill. on Playbill, and a lot of the and not a lot of the things that were on the theaters list were also specifically not on Playbill because they were trying to throw people off. So like I was just like, okay, well, fuck that show. Um, we are in fact getting a beautiful noise, which again, it's the Neil Diamond musical. If I had known it was touring, it's the perfect show for a touring house like that. Yeah, I was supposed to go see it, and then we got our dates. I think I told you we got our dates yes. on. They only had a matinee, and so it was yeah. Tony Todd said. So I didn't see it, but yeah enjoy then the other one that we're getting that i was unaware was touring is the whiz oh right 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 yeah but because yeah, i wasn't sure if it was touring because it's coming because it broadway and so i thought it wasn't yeah. touring because of that so. exactly but because we're getting the whiz we're not getting wicked which makes sense because having them both in the same season yeah, would be course. stupid um we will probably have wicked for our special engagement next season instead but because we're not getting wicked for our special engagement this season because having the wicked and whiz in the same season would be stupid we're doing something even stupider in our special engagement and thank god it's the special engagement and i don't have to have tickets for it is hamilton for the 47th oh right, right. what show is coming in august anything this year you know what you cut out we are not teching any shows this year. Oh. Yeah. They don't start till January? No, it'll be in September, but we don't when we have a show in August, it's usually because we are the first stop, so they have to like do the tech and bring all the people in and do all the rehearsals and we are not oh, having any of those. So our first show won't be till the third week of September. Because gotcha. we're not, because they're teching elsewhere. And that's Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot is our first show, but they're teching in Schenectady. Gotcha. So nowhere. Nothing for me to see if I come in August. No. And if you, when you come in January, it will be Lion King. So. Been there, done that twice. Right. <laughs> Three times. Three times I've seen Lion King. <laughs> I've seen it quite anymore. a few times. I'm happy to see it again, but yeah, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't pay extra to see it again if it weren't already part of the season. No, it was my first Broadway level show. Um, Mm -hmm. I saw it at the, uh, um, my God, the Strout. No, Strout's Matter. What the? 
I guess that theater, the one Sanger. Oh my God, the Sanger in New Orleans. We saw it for Caitlin's bachelorette party. Nice. My first Broadway um, level, my first Broadway level, like my first national tour, was the the national tour of Greece in mm-hmm. two thousand and five, when Frankie Avalon was on tour as the Teen Angel. I love it. I my first it. actual Broadway was How to Succeed with Daniel Radcliffe. My first Broadway <laughs> was Aladdin. So. Yeah. Yeah, no. I met Harry Potter the first time I went to Broadway. I'm so jealous. I need to, I need to try and pop into Merrily before I leave. Yeah. Um, July I think 7th. I can just literally just pop in. Like, I don't think I'm yeah. going to pay for anything. I mean, what, so. June, June 7th or July 7th? When does it close? Well, I leave April 11th. So. Oh, I know, but I'm trying to remember. Um, I just saw. I don't. I think it's June. I think it's yeah. the first week of June. But I think that I don't know if the cast is staying the whole time because last I saw on like Jonathan Groff's list, he had like posted only through like March stuff, and it was like tickets were so. so I'm concerned some of them are leaving early. So. I think, but I think that's why they up. I think that's why they set the closing date when they did was so that they could all stay. Okay, maybe but so. That'd be nice. Maybe, yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try and um, pop in not this week, um, but maybe next week. Yeah. While I have a little flexibility in my schedule, the week that I'm not moving <laughs> anywhere, right? Um, I need to try and see those people anyways before I leave. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, before uh, we get into this episode, even though we're 25 minutes Absolutely. into it, um, look, this is the only episode we're recording this week, so so we forgot how to time. Um, yeah. <laughs> can you give me some spiritual guidance? I got you. Um, everything I have right now is not <laughs> uplifting, <laughs> but is a little spiritually uplifting um i'm going through it so um i promise i'm not perfectly fine but i'm not shattered either i'm in the process of healing seeing the beauty in tough situations and making it a part of my journey rm drake you and rm drake let me tell you <laughs> look i i, I screened out <laughs> one quote from rm drake on facebook and now every other post i think is like a quote from them so like I have some other ones saved that actually aren't from them, but that one felt most apropos today. Yeah. Like I have, I literally have like seven other authors on the nine other posts I have saved, but that was just the one that felt right today. So yeah. Well today I'm so excited to talk about this. I don't know anything about anything. Uh, there were yeah. so many like new people that felt big enough to be a different role that I was like, which there was are you talking about? literally not a single character who was new in this episode except for one. Every what other about the thing. guy who was with Daniel Jackson? Has he been on there before? Yes. Oh, I just have <laughs> there was literally every other featured character is a recurring character only one oh. was new <laughs> i see well i wasn't sure because i wasn't sure what's the guy's name that was with daniel jackson then major davis well oh, that's major davis yeah yeah this face and name do not go together for me <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah no I'm colonel sure Simmons, was- colonel, Sim- colonel simmons mayborn yeah colonel check colonel Chekhov. adrian crane slash the gold and major davis were all five recurring characters gotcha. so well i Dr. never called major davis's name so i didn't know it. it was major davis or the other guy no no it was not um so the, the new character we're gonna talk about i will just say this character is specifically known for having an arc um because even the producers of the show describe him in this episode as an unsus- an insufferable ass no one likes him after this episode. And I was so excited. I was People like, liked I... him during this episode? No, no, no. No, no, I mean, like, oh, I see. when you watch this episode. Because of. Like, because, because of. Like, episode, yeah. Okay. So this is his first episode, and he won't be back this season. Um, okay. So when that was all people had, they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, 
obviously Correct. He, it will right. be different later. Um, but I was freaking out that it was his first episode. And I was like, Courtney's going to watch this episode and be like, I don't understand why Mercury loves him so much. And um, I just, and Doug was like, because my God. Doug was like, because there's literally not a single likable thing about him in this episode. And I was like, the thing is, I still find it funny because I know him better. Like, if yes, on the first glance, he's terrible, but like, I'm just yeah. like giggling. <laughs> So. I was like, sure, she knows what she's doing. It's fine. It's fine. So today we were talking about Sorry SG One, season five, episode fourteen, forty eight hours. It was rated seven point six stars, and it came out on Friday, March fifteenth, two thousand two, which I did write as twenty fifth, just because I'm used to writing March twenty fifth. Um, and then I had to, I had to fix it because it was fifteenth. Um, it's funny. The same song and book as last week. Um, we're only a week away but if you also remember last week i said that i was going to talk about the movie that is the reason the terrible movie i'd never heard of last week fell off of the number one because it came out on this day march 15th and that is that march 15th 2002 was the theater in theaters premiere of the dreamworks animated film ice age (laughs) what a good time to be alive Yes. So our number one uh, movie is Ice Age. Classic. Oh my gosh. A piece of art. Um, Disney also somehow has reached an agreement with um DreamWorks for Ice Age characters because they're currently the featured characters on my Disney Magic Kingdoms game, and it is throwing me all the fucking way off. I'm like playing that is my Disney. So wild. <laughs> right? Like the new It characters. must be this last. This last round. That this last thing. Yeah, it like just last two weeks ago became inserted these new characters into the game and it was fucking Sid from Ice Age. And I was like, I'm sorry, what is happening? World DreamWorks gave in? I'm that's what I'm most surprised Wait, by. but here's the thing. If Disney and DreamWorks reached an agreement for characters, does that mean Kung Fu Panda and Shrek can also now be in my Disney game? Well, it depends. Is it like a is it a licensed use of <laughs> say sid or is it like no but it's all it's all of the it's all of the ice age characters so they like license ice age to right for for disney to promote it because ice age is not getting the promotion for this new stuff like some others like kung fu panda's doing kung fu panda's doing fine they're they're on my uh my box i think no this is not kung fu panda i thought that said kung fu it's another asian language um but they're they're fine. They're everywhere yeah. getting promotion. Yeah. Um but well, but here's the thing. Kung Shrek's Fu Panda right now. Yeah. No, Kung Fu Panda has the um added benefit of the fact that it is Jack Black and Jack Black can do no wrong. And he also does a heck of a lot of marketing on his own. Yes. Like so yeah, but I like, like, like the entire Hemi baby one more time music video. I I love it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with TikTok right now. Speaking of, I like with maybe Jack that's Black, what my always. I also love Jack Black. Maybe that's what like just to show how bad my mental state is right now that I'm so obsessed with TikTok. But I cannot stop. I cannot stop. Yep. I found I did I tell you about the penguin reality show I'm watching? No. <laughs> it's called Love on Thin Ice. And it's this woman who works at like a penguin. Um uh, what's it called? Like environment? What are those called? Enclosure exhibit. Enclosure, yeah. And uh, every mating season, she like goes through and tells you about all the couples and like who's being like petty. And so I'll send it. I'll send it to you. I'm oh obsessed. God. I need this. It is amazing. Um, There's a homewrecker. Like, oh my gosh, it's truly the best thing I've ever seen. So it's fantastic. Anyways, Ice Age. Yeah. So genius, genius. Um. On this day, which obviously the most important thing that happened on that day is that Ice Age came out. Um, but the only yeah. other important fact that I have is that um, a, the statue of John Lennon at the Liverpool airport was unveiled that day. Oh. Yeah. What a day. What a choice. Was that his birthday yeah. or something? Like, No idea. I don't think so. I don't think it is either. Yeah. I feel like his birthday's in summer. Oh, I was thinking fall. I want to be day. October 9th. Yeah. Fall. You were right. Okay. Uh-huh. 
I was like, that doesn't feel like what I yeah. think his birthday is. No. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it would be funny, though, if it was actually the birthday of a different Beatles member, just to, like, oh fuck God, how hilarious. people over there. <gasps> oh, that'd be hilarious. I'll double check. You keep, you keep going. Um, no, Paul McCartney's is in June. George Harrison is in February and Ringo Starr is in July. Okay. So. And Yoko Ono's is in February. So who yeah. knows? Who knows? No relation. All right. Um, this episode was directed by Peter Wost. Um, we know he's him? not. He, we do. He's not new, but this is only his third episode and the first, mm. and they've been spread out. So one was in season two and one was in season three. So we haven't heard his name often. The last one he directed was The Light, which was the episode where we met um, Oma. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the one he did before that was Maternal Instinct, which was the one where we got Cassandra for the first time. Oh yeah. So like he's 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 done good ones. He's mm -hmm. um just not one of our more common directors. Um Very it was electronic -y ones. Like yeah. misery and Yeah. Um he it was written by Robert C. Cooper and edited by Rick Martin. So nothing new there. And now I have an entire page of notes for our guests. <laughs> Great. We'll be here all night, folks. Yeah. So our guest star is David Hewlett, uh, who plays Dr. Rodney McKay. Um, guest star is the correct term right now. It will not stay that way. Well, it will in SG1. But Got it. But he's, um, we're in it for the long run with him. Yes, we are. Um, he is known for Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, ah, see, I just watched that. Yeah. Uh, C, Last year I did. Um, the Shape of Water and Stargate. Um, primarily Stargate Atlantis. But um, he was born on April 18th, 1968, which is not only the same day as my mom, it's the same year as my mom. Oh, like It's the exact tense. same birthday as my mom. Um, but he was born in Surrey in the UK. I know you can't tell from this episode, but he is a British man. <laughs> Tracks. Um, his sauciness. He was inspired by Doctor Who to pursue acting, um, and he loves sci-fi. Doctor Who was his favorite show, and his favorite doctor was the fourth doctor. Um, he also created a company called Tech Bandits that um, helps with, uh, like, classrooms to inspire curiosity for STEAM subjects. Like, he creates projects to get nice. kids into STEAM. Um, he loves public speaking and podcasting, and he every time he does any public appearance, he ends it with the fact that he wants to tell people. I know I've already thought about it. Don't don't worry, <laughs> I've already thought about it. Um, the problem is when I send him a message, it's going to come off very creepy because I love him so much. Um, but not really. I, I will. Send it. I will. Should I, send it? <laughs> I will. I will edit. I will write it first on a separate document, and then have someone who's not insane edit it before I send it. Um, Would you like me to read it before you send it? Probably, but also maybe not because I don't want to spoil anything. So it oh, depends. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Make um, um make Doug read it. Yeah, I'm gonna have Doug or he feels Dan very or, level headed. Yeah. Um, he, but he ends everything he does with the fact that he wants to inspire people to be brave, to be kind, and to be curious. Um, oh, he also better spiritual affirmation, right? He also <laughs> um, co-designed an AI-powered Google I/O that came out in 2023, and he works with the University of Toronto to design to create their escape room design program. Um. <laughs> He's just a fascinating man. I'm obsessed with him. He is married and he has one son and um, he proposed to his wife on Christmas Day in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just, I love David Hewlett. Um, also unrelated to David Hewlett because he was not on the list. I cried again about a Comic-Con this week. Because in October of 2024, there is a Comic Con in San Antonio, Texas. I was there. That, yeah. Well, guess who when will be it? When is it? It's October 24th. That's my mom's birthday. Um, and I, at that Comic Con, John Lancey, 
who plays Colonel Simmons. Along with like, he, but remember, he was also Q in Star Trek. So like he's there with like eight other Star Trek characters. Um, and along with Robert Picardo and Robert Picardo, um, we haven't seen on Stargate yet. He's more famous for Star Trek, but he is on Stargate. I know his name. I don't know him, but like I've heard his he's, name before. He's bald with like the hair on the sides like this and glasses. And you like, when you see his face, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, but he will be on Stargate later. We haven't met him ah, on yes, Stargate yes. yet. Yeah, but he's a big Star Trek person, but we haven't met him on Stargate yet, but he he's will. He's a lot of things. Yes. Um, but so John Lancey and Robert Picardo are there as the Stargate Star Trek crossover. There's also like... <sighs> William Shatner, Brett Spiner, Gates McFadden, um, Anson Mount, Ethan Peck, Melissa Navarez, and Jess Bush, all-star track people that I was freaking out about. I've seen William Shatner at Comic-Con. Yeah, me too. Um, But all the other people, most of the people I just said are from the Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also, Richard Dean Anderson, Amanda Tapping, Terrell Rothery and Michael Shanks. Oh my god, the whole crew! Oh. <gasps> Everyone except for Christopher Judge. If Christopher Judge Which gets I added, should... Christopher Judge. If Christopher Judge gets added, and all five of them are there, I don't care how much money it is. I don't care how close it is to my wedding. I have to go. I'll take my mom for her birthday. She but it's is. also it's it's also Michael it's Michael Shanks' first American con since we've been doing the podcast. Oh yeah, <gasps> he's the only one Let of the four I haven't met. And we'll so see if I, 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 I don't know where I'll live. Maybe I'll live in San Antonio. Then who knows? Who's right. to say? Yeah, Who's I cried. Say? Um, and it's amazing. Then I shut my computer so that I didn't continue to look at it. Um, <laughs> good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Like um, it. If if they added David Hewlett, then I would have problems saying no. Um, yeah. But let's get into this very complicated episode. To be fair, um, my notes for this episode are kind of not super detailed because there was a lot of talking in this episode, like just conversation scenes. Um, Yeah. I actually really liked the structure of this episode. No, I mean, it's a little more chaotic. (laughs) No, it is chaotic. And I like the structure. I just like there was a lot of conversations, especially the conversations between Rodney and Sam. I didn't take notes on what they were saying. I'm going to be 100% honest because I didn't understand what they were saying. And I don't no think you were did. supposed to, uh, yeah, you weren't supposed no. to understand what they were saying. <laughs> um, that's kind of the whole thing with the two of them. <laughs> right. That makes sense. Um, but so we start this episode with SG-1 running away from Gaul to air fire, um, and they get the gate open and start to run through, but at the last second, Teal'c turns around to destroy the ship that is chasing them that we see has Tanith inside of it. Um, but as the ship crashes it busts the gate and the worm hole closes before teal has a chance to come through and they try to redial the planet to see what happened but there's an unknown error and the computer can't recognize what the error is to even tell them what the error is and so they like and the the error code that's coming up has to do with the gate itself on the other end not um the dialing computer so they decide to abort the dialing and that is the credits. <laughs> um, so literally, we like open with uh, Tanith dying, and then maybe also Teal'c dying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh no, we've left Teal'c behind. <laughs> um. So after the credits, um, Sam is talking to Daniel and Hammond. Well, Daniel, like, there's a quick scene where Daniel's filling in Hammond about what happened on the planet about Tanith's ship and whatever. Um, but then Sam figures out that Teal'c's energy signature is stored in the gate. Um, but as soon as another wormhole is established, it like will erase the memory. It's basically like your 2002 um, MP3 player that only had exactly enough room for the three songs you wanted to listen to. And then as soon as you downloaded a new song, it deleted everything. Um uh-huh. That's like the, the memory. One. Yeah. Like that's the memory storage <laughs> capability um, that the Stargate has. And so once the new wormhole opens and the new energy signals come in, it will delete anything that was saved there. But so like 
Teal exists still, but as unsolidified energy instead of matter. Which is unfortunate for yeah. him. So um, they move the iris slightly to like block the gate better rather than just like protecting them, um, which they should have fucking had in the first place. Um, and Hammond calls the Pentagon to like set up having the teams that are already out on other like off world dial into the Russian gate to make sure that no one comes in through the gate. Mm -hmm. Um, on the phone with the Pentagon, Dan, um, Hammond says that he's going to send his the most qualified man with them to negotiate with the Russians. And turns out the most qualified man to negotiate with the Russians is Daniel Jackson. Which felt surprising <laughs> <laughs> for me. Um, it's definitely like, not my first choice I would have made. But then again, like, he um, did surprisingly well, but like, oh, he did. He did really well. But I mean, here's the thing. I wouldn't send Jack. No, for sure. Um, even if Teal'c wasn't the one trapped in the gate, probably wouldn't send Teal'c. No. Um, and Sam is otherwise occupied. Yeah. So unless we're like going to the B team, Daniel is in fact the only qualified man for the job. I guess that's true. I would think like maybe Hammond would go negotiate like Big Dog it, you know? Yeah, but he can't leave the base because then some fucker from the Pentagon will show up and usurp it because there's nobody oh. to out to pull rank. Truly. Truly. God bless. Um, so so uh, <laughs> then we Yeah, it really felt a little almost a little out of character how well Daniel did like in the situation see I think I don't think I think the problem is that this is exactly what Daniel was like in season one mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we like we Daniel's character morphs a lot and not necessarily in the best way I think that no, that movie sense. Daniel and season one Daniel, that is who showed up in this episode. And I think that that's who Daniel really is. Yeah, I, I can definitely see it from movie Daniel. I don't remember season one Daniel enough to be fair. Which is fair. But season one season one Daniel is very similar to movie Daniel because in season one, Michael, Michael Shanks was specifically attempting to like copy James Spader's portrayal James Spader. a little bit. Um. Then we have a really cute scene where Jack goes to like talk to Sam and figure out what's going on and how he can be helpful. And she's like, don't worry about it. Like, sir, it's complicated. And he's like, no, 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 you can talk to me. So she starts to explain the science to him. And um, he's like, how about I just like get you a coffee? Because he yeah. has no fucking idea what she's talking about. But um, in her scientific rambling, we find out that she is starting to second guess whether there is an option and that they think that Daniel might or Teal'c might actually be done. Correct. Correct. I feel like the one thing that I have ruined for you is any fear that Teal'c will leave. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like these are not the situations that I'm concerned about them dying in. Fair. Because, and They'll probably disappoint me, but the way that I expect for it to happen is that anyone who goes is going to go really big. And so, like, you're not going to just, like, throw someone on a planet and be like, oh, they didn't make it back. Like, I feel like that's a little too that's fair. low key. That's fair. For I mean, death. To be fair, that is exactly what they did to Tana. Yeah, but episode. Tana isn't, like, the same. <laughs> like, yeah. He, he's not, like, core four. Like, if they yeah, got to, no. like, Bray talk, I also would be, like, super, you know, thrown yeah. off by it. I wouldn't love it, but I would be, like, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, but, like, 4-4, four, four, I don't think they're going that way. Fair enough. Um. So then Major Davis and Daniel go to Russia, and I wrote where Colonel Asshole from the last Russian episode, because <laughs> I couldn't remember his name, um, says right. that the Russians need to be allowed to have their own Stargate program. I'm like, now it's not the time, my friend. No. no. Um, then we go back like to... I guess, 
technically it is because like you do want to negotiate because people are a little more willing to give if they're in a tight situation yeah so i guess technically oh, he's asking at the right time the, but... the negotiations in this episode were impeccable yeah um on both sides i was like totally into it on both sides mm-hmm. um jack we go back to sgc and jack is passed out sleeping on the table in the mess hall <laughs> And Hammond is like, um, you need to go home. And basically we see another moment of Jack um, saying that somebody else is at fault, but clearly believing that he is at fault. Mm-hmm. Correct. Like he was like, he was like, this wouldn't have happened if Teal could just followed orders. But like, clearly he's a hundred percent blaming himself. Oh, um, for sure. For sure. And then Colonel Hammond tells him, or Colonel Hammond, General Hammond tells him that it is in order. He needs to go get some sleep. And then Hammond mm-hmm. leaves the mess hall and comes around the corner. And Colonel Simmons has arrived with Dr. Rodney McKay. Least, least fave Simmons. Um, and Dr. Rodney McKay has been studying the gate in Area 51 um, as for over a year. And he is, according to Simmons, the world's foremost expert on Stargates. Um, Hammond starts to argue and say that Sam is obviously the expert. And then Rodney... <sighs> Rodney is a fucking asshole. Um, but Rodney, Rodney almost comes off as to me, he, you know, he is an asshole. Like, and he's not supposed to be anything other than an asshole. Like he's supposed to be like a prick. But in my mind, when I watch this, I don't see Rodney as being an ass so much as I see Rodney as being like autistic, is he autistic no oh, i don't think okay. i don't th- i don't think that that's the intention but the way he is like not even like contemplating an argument and he's just mm-hmm. not even putting her down it it, it changes obviously Ooh. no 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 but he i he does later <laughs> but in this moment he's not even yeah. intentionally putting her down he's just saying there are over 400 different codes that could possibly come out of the Stargate and you have like been wrong on 220 of them. And he's just like giving her numbers and facts and all of these things. Right. And it almost comes off as like a Sheldon Cooper, like mm-hmm. Big Bang Theory level where he's like an asshole, but like not because he is intentionally just because he doesn't understand stupid people. Right, right. <laughs> and yeah. that, I, think, no, I get that i thought you were saying like through the whole episode i was like no he was definitely rude to her no no episode. no oh no he, he he's rude he's he's so rude and like i said no one argues that but in this yeah. moment when you see in how he moment, continues yeah. to be an asshole through the episode you're like oh no no he's an asshole but in this moment where it's like hi i'm no one i've been studying this for a year and i can tell you to the degree everything that you've gotten wrong mm-hmm. it, it like almost comes off like like it feels like he was locked in a room and hasn't been allowed out the past year. Like he's only right. been studying this right. like for he the has, past he has year. Zero social under the door. He has zero <laughs> show social skills. He is completely unaware of why anyone else would be upset with him. <laughs> and he has more knowledge than you could ever need to have about anything in a year. And that's why I'm like, in this moment, when you first meet him, if this was the only Rodney scene you had this episode, you'd be like, oh, that poor autistic kid. Um, And then he just continues to like shit talk people and yeah. it's like oh no he he might have a touch of the tism but he's also just a fucking prick right because like even if he has all this knowledge from studying it like he doesn't have the real world experience they have to add to it <laughs> Ugh, I can't which believe. in his I'm mind so in, it's okay in his mind that's a good thing because he doesn't have a tainted or emotional knowledge mm-hmm. of it he has like in this scene when Hammond is like oh you must be so excited to be seeing it in in for real not your model and he just goes not really yeah this man this man um so Simmons tells Sam that she and Rodney have 48 hours to solve the problem of the gate and that's it and after 48 hours they will be resuming normal 
uh, like use of the gate and that yeah, like and Hammond is yeah TV and Hammond is like you don't get to come in here and tell me how to do my job and Simmons is like oh no no I don't but <laughs> the president does and I'm just here to deliver the orders okay well the president hasn't called the red phone yet so we want to hear it from him yeah no um <laughs> my note says Simmons sa- is like hey don't shoot the messenger here it's not my call to give you a deadline just business baby <laughs> don't Except know what we should shoot the messenger well yeah always he's um only doing it to be a jerk yeah we go back to Russia and now that all of the SG teams are back on earth um Major Davis and Daniel Jackson are trying to send another team out to go meet with the Tokra to figure out what to do about the gate. And the Russians are like, no, we did our part. Yeah. Like they they were like, there needs to be a better deal. You don't get to just like continue to use our resources and not have any part of this be a conversation. Which like, I get it. <laughs> it sucks yeah. in the like, in practice yeah. but like i get it yeah um we go back to colorado um and jack is at a gas station and when he walks out of the gas station mayborn is just hanging out near a car and <laughs> uh, realize in this moment, this is the first time we've, we've this is the first time we've seen mayborn since um the adrian crane episode and mm-hmm. we were I forgot until he started screaming at him that Jack still believes Mayborn shot him. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mayborn is like, I promise you it wasn't me. And Jack's like, you came all the way to Colorado to tell me that you aren't the one who shot me. And he's like, how else would you have believed me otherwise? And he's like, I can't tell isn't he still technically on the run? Like, yeah, no, he's a hundred percent. No, he's a hundred percent still a fugitive. He's a hundred percent still a fugitive. Um, this was a little uh, risky. Uh, apparently, a fugitive who doesn't care because um, he is just openly in the middle of a parking lot, giving the name of his hotel and the name that his room is under. Um, but he's also like seems to be still in communication with like NID and like other government like teams. And I'm like, what is? what is happening yeah. here oh yeah like, no he's getting he's getting information from people all over the place i don't right i don't really understand how that works but he basically is like i'm pretty sure simmons is the one who shot you and um uh, i can't tell you more but i can tell you he's up to something i just don't know what and i don't trust it I told you that yeah and um jack doesn't want to believe him because he's like, well, Simmons says you're the one who's the problem. And Mayborn goes, well, do you trust him? And Jack's like, no. And he's like, good, me either. And I'm the one who hired him. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, we all know. We saw, what is it, 2010? We all know he's trying to become president and take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, Rodney, back on base, Rodney tells Sam that she has basically done everything wrong. Um, and that running the gate without the DHD caused not just this problem, but like basically all of their problems and is just kind of being an asshole. And Sam yells at him to get out of her lab. But then the phone rings and it's Daniel. And unfortunately, Daniel tells her literally everything Rodney just told her, um, but nicer and from the Tok'ra. But it, it proves that Rodney, while a dick, is he is correct. smart but like, <laughs> like um like be a little more tactful maybe yeah or go back to your hidey hole and um D- daniel sam's like well what about maybe like getting the dhd back from russia and <laughs> daniel says not unless we want to give them back alaska yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i was like yeah that feels that feels right <laughs> yeah um then back on base hammond tells Simmons that he is not going to deal with his bullshit because simmons like blackmails hammond to in right to his face and he's like um i like basically i can help you but for a price and hammond's like i will have you arrested right now and he's yeah. like well then i'll make sure you never see tilk again yeah, like, what a jerk. What a jerk. I hate um, this guy. So Jack goes to see Mayborn 
who clearly has already had a phone call with Jack or at least with someone else because he starts laughing about the fact that Simmons had the fucking balls <laughs> to <laughs> try to blackmail him into his face. And Jack is there to talk to him about potentially using him to find the Adrian Crane gold. Mm-hmm. Um, back in Russia, the negotiations have continued and the Russians are now demanding that a team be stationed at SGC and have all intel shared equally among both countries. And Major Davis acts in the true nature of the U.S. government and is like, in what fucking world would we give you any of that? And, um, and he's like, like, what is here about? (laughs) <laughs> he's like and Daniel's like maybe we shouldn't listen to him and but Davis is like or what what are you gonna do and he's like well you know we have the DHD we can override it this can become the dominant gate for the world the planet we don't even need you <laughs> this is where I died because Davis was like that would be an act of war and <laughs> Colonel Chekhov goes you can't go to war over a secret that your people don't even know about and he said it wouldn't be unprecedented. It's like it wouldn't be the first time. Would it be the first time? I laughed so hard that I had to pause it for a couple minutes. And Dan was just like, oh. So funny. Oh. But it. Mm. Wouldn't be the first time. And once again, Stargate drags the U.S. government. Um, yeah. Yep. And Jackson's like, okay. Daniel's like, listen, how about a timeout? What would be the price for the DHD? And uh, Colonel Chekhov's like, well, you know, I don't know how much it's worth because I don't have the information. Which again, proper negotiation skills. Um. Then we go back to Harry and Jack and Harry is searching the NID computer system for all of the safe houses to um, find where Simmons is hiding Adrian. And it turns out that he took a pit stop from Washington, D.C. to Colorado in North Dakota. Now, I know that technically on a map, North Dakota is in between those two, Um, but it's not really an, an airplane path in between those two and even the people who are going to North Dakota have never stopped a plane in North Dakota (laughs) yeah it's a it's a strange choice for sure um yeah have you do you know anyone who's ever been to North Dakota no I had family in Montana that's the closest I've had right like I know people who have been to South Dakota to see Mount Mount Rushmore and I know people and I know people who have lived in Montana Mm -hmm. but I quite literally don't know a single person in my entire life who has been to North Dakota I don't think I have either I don't think I have either next stop I'm going to North Dakota that's where I'm moving Perfect. Um, Sam and Rodney still bickering and um, fighting. We learn a very important fact about Rodney in the scene that will continue for the entirety of his time in the Stargate universe. And that is that Rodney McKay is deathly allergic to all citrus. I was like, is this where he talks about citrus or where he talks about finding Sam attractive? (laughs) <laughs> oh oh don't worry those are both very important facts um, <laughs> uh, but yes no he is deathly allergic to citrus and he does not make that a secret he talks about it often <laughs> um he also um we find out is the reason for the deadline being the number that it is and if you were starting to find any of his quirks endearing, this is where it stops because he is like, Teal'c is already dead. That's why it's called a deadline. 
This man. This man. Um, Sam uh, basically tells him to fuck all the way off and mm-hmm. gets up away from the table. And Rodney says, I wish I didn't find you so attractive. There, I always loved a dumb blonde. <laughs> she says to go. I don't know suck- how she didn't. Yeah. She tells him to go suck a lemon. Yeah. I don't know um, how she didn't turn around and just like punch him in the face. Which he then just mutters about how sexy it is. Um, yeah. So the thing about this is that um, Rodney does genuinely find Sam attractive. Mm-hmm. Because Rodney has literally never met anyone for Sam who was even on the same planet of intellectual capability that he was. And so while these conversations are infuriating and volatile, if she's able to have the conversations with him, whereas literally no one else ever has. I'm not convinced he's met a woman before Sam. I really think he's just been locked away in a hole his whole life, like studying science case. Like, and not that, like, Sam's not attractive, but, like, I'm not sure he's not a woman. I mean, so. the canon answer is that he's never met anyone who's intellectually equal right. to him before I mean, Sam. Sure. Um, I mean, both but, things. Both things could be true. It's, yeah. Um, new canon. So, new canon. Um, then... Mayborn and Jack attack the safe house where Adrian is That's being serious. kept. Um, and they nah, they zap everyone on the entire property until Jack is alone with Adrian. And he's like, I want answers. I want, like, a Thelma and Louise, but Mayborn and Jack storyline. Like, I want them driving off into the sunset together listening to, like, 80s pop. Agree, but I also find that choice of music disturbing, and I would like a different, a different one. Maybe like nature podcasts. No, that's too. That's too on the. That's too on the nose. I want it to be off the wall. Like, if you're not gonna go, if you're not gonna go '80s pop, go '70s rock. Like, I can, I can swallow that one a little bit better. Yeah, '80s pop is just glam rock. Like, not straight. 70s rock like i want some glam rock in there too but the glam rock when it comes on mayborn gets excited and jack rolls his eyes but then sings all the words under his breath yeah 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 100 um again new canon i'm rewriting stargate today um daniel wants to give so now the negotiations have paused then daniel is alone with major davis talking about the negotiations and daniel wants to give the russians a naquita generator in exchange for the dhd and daniel is or and davis is like very against it and it comes off very very u.s superiorism like it is not a good look for davis the arguments that he's making against it so um not not good and the problem is that part of it is really hard to swallow because of when the episode came out and like Mm -hmm. being in march of 2002 and the whole um we don't know who else they'll give it to argument is really tricky because of the russia afghanistan iraq iran sure like which granted is still the same conversation we're having (gasps) So, yes. <laughs> yes. Nothing's changed. It's, it was years. just like it was just like really, really sticky conversation in 2002. Yeah. Um and then we go back to Jack and he wants to know how to save Teal'c and Adrian says no. Um and they're like continuing to fight, and Adrian's like, Simmons was a much better negotiator than you are. This is a waste of my time. But Jack notices that there's a camera in the cell and so he and mayborn go to find the tapes to see if they can find the conversation that happened between mayborn or um between simmons and adrian 
Um, then Daniel, um, in the most on Daniel like move of his life of actually successfully negotiating with someone ever convinces Colonel Chekhov to give them the DHD so that they can save Teal, um, on the condition that the Colonel comes with them to the SJC. That's like the trade off. Um, and that they Which will feels like the correct one. That's yeah, the one they, I would have liked best. For and sure. they will, and they will give them the Nakwata reactors and they will work on whether or not they're going to send people back and forth. Like they're beginning mm-hmm. to open communication, but in this moment for the sake of the time frame that they have, yeah, it, it is more on goodwill to do this one thing while we still mm-hmm. let the governments decide what to do next. Right. Um, and Sam tells Hammond that Daniel and Chekhov are on their way. And Hammond is like, unfortunately, like I'm out of time. I don't get to do this. My options are either to let SG2 go through the gate or to resign. And then who knows who will be leaving the space in an hour. So if an hour is enough time for you to save this and like, have me get my job back before somebody else comes in fine. But if you need more than an hour, you're going to have to tell me what to do. And Sam's like, I don't have an answer. So they start to die. So they start to dial the gate back up again. And it's very dramatic and it's very sad and scary. And we're convinced that it's going to go through and it's going to, um, that Teal's going to die, except for that this is TV. So of course that's not how it's going to happen. Um, and just in time, Jack calls to save Teal and have Simmons arrested. Which, right. to be honest, thank God Tilk's alive. But also, much more important, thank God Simmons they have proof is. that Simmons is a problem. Um, yeah. So they use the plan that Adrian came up with <laughs> to decide how to save Tilk. And um, to be fair, the plan is unsound at best. It's a lot of (laughs) theoretical hope for the best MacGyvering shit, which is SG-1's, like, forte. Mm -hmm. But any rational scientific mind would be concerned. And also, um, Rodney is much more concerned than your average rational scientific mind. And so he is like, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? that you are going to go through with this plan. I am concerned for your leadership, for the air force. Like, I don't know what's happening. And Hammond's like, well, I guess you can find out on your new assignment as part of the air force to be the liaison to Russia and their Nakoda generators. You can't pull a man out of a hole where he's never met people and throw him into Russia. Like, do we, does he know Russian? I understand that the Russian government knows English, but like, I feel like you should make sure they know Russian so it's an easier liaison. Like, I got some questions before we just decide we're done with you being here. You now have to go there. Well, <laughs> luckily for you, Rodney will come back. And so maybe we'll have answers. Right. Um, but as of now, he's, podcast. um, yeah, luckily for now, he's being uh, shipped off to Russia. So he's out of Sam's hair. Yeah. Um, which is nice. And then they do their thing that works everything's great um but it does unfortunately blow up the dhd which they were not prepared for so stay tuned to the fact that we're definitely going to have more russia coming up soon to deal with the fact that we sure. blew up the dhd um and um Teal is unaware that any of this happened as far as he is aware um he just blew up the spaceship so that's yeah. interesting um this is hard. Yeah. So, uh, how you feeling? Thoughts, theories, predictions? I comments? actually really liked it. Um, what did you say it was rated again? Seven point six. I might so, like give it a little more because, like, it was. I guess it was a little different, but it felt a little more like Stargate-y, I guess. Yeah. That makes sense. Like you had your sci-fi and your like military elements. And um, I liked that. I think this is our first episode that they've really been that separated, all four of them. Yeah. Like, usually they're paired up or, like, it's one person. But these were all four and they're, like, on. 
and their own spots. And obviously um, it would have been it would have been nice to see like a teal storyline to go with it, but each of the sure. th- other three were like having very much their own story that was in their realm of what they're good at. It wasn't yeah. really I really do like this episode a lot. Yeah, I thought it was really nice to see them all kind of in their own elements and how they react, like bouncing off of other people. Because like of course you have a core four and it's nice, but like you can only do that for so much without it being like, okay, we know what's gonna happen. Like I can tell you every line they're gonna say to each other at one point, you know? And so yeah. it's nice to pull them out of that for a minute. And just I I know that like hold on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um oh. and like I know that we hated Mayborn in the beginning. I hated Mayborn in the beginning. But oh, like, I love Mayborn. I love really Mayborn. love nothing more than his and Jack's friendship. Like it yeah. just brings me so much joy. And so anytime he's there, I just get excited now. Um but yeah, so I actually very much liked it. I thought I um for lack of understanding of science, I understood most of it. I thought the negotiations yeah. were fun. Yeah. Um yeah, so I, I, I liked it. I'm I'm in I I don't have a ton of trivia. Um, I do have a couple things. Um, everything that I have, uh, really comes from Joseph Malozzi's blog. Um, but the, the first thing is a continuity. It is a plot hole and it is a stupid plot hole, but it is one that bothers me because I am me, (laughs) um, in the scene where Rodney is complaining that he can't have lemon chicken because he will die if he has citrus. Um, he has cheesecake on his plate. And um, I don't know if you know <laughs> didn't even see that. how to make cheesecake. <laughs> I do. There is citrus. <laughs> Lemon zest yeah, is 99% sure. of the time used in cheesecake. Yeah. Um, At least lemon juice, if not. Like, there's yeah. a citric acid in it's your it, cheesecake, for sure. There has to be to keep the texture yeah. correct. <laughs> um, That's to funny. be fair, he doesn't eat that. the cheesecake. Um but he he voluntarily took cheesecake yeah. one allergic to citrus so that was yeah. stupid um it it's just annoys me um because it's such a big part of his personality it's a dumb mistake to make but it's yeah. just because literally whoever was doing that was like oh no it's just cheese and cake right um, i just don't know how recipes yeah. work um the only other thing that i have is that um they originally planned to have a much more spectacular um face-off send-off for Tanith. um uh-huh. but they but they couldn't get contract negotiations for the actor um mm. down oh. and rather than have another villain that just disappeared especially when they were such a big part of an overarching story they wanted to address it and have him like die in a way where the audience right. knew what happened and knew what was going on so that it wasn't just like a, a background story that we never got closure on um which is nice yeah which is nice um I prefer it. next week's episode will once again introduce somebody that is a very big deal for the future of the show Ooh. um but it it does so by coming back to some stories that we need to touch on because we haven't talked about them in a while. How long is a while? Like first season or like no. the season end of last season? Like I might remember this. Really yeah, close. no, you will you will remember okay. that because it's it's a story <laughs> cool, that cool. we've it's a story that we've talked about you and I as something that gotcha. needs to be addressed and continued, but hasn't been on the show. Perfect. Yes, love it. Um. So, um, who do you want to punch? Ugh, my God, Simmons every day, all day. No question. Like um, Rodney probably should get like a slap or something, but like, yeah, I God for the life of me, I just want to punch Simmons in the face always. Well, well you are gonna punch Simmons, and I am sure I will really rarely feel this way, even if the rest of the world does. So for this episode, I will punch Rodney because in this episode. He deserves it. Yes, yes. Correct. <laughs> um, correct. Correct. I will say I warm up to Rodney a lot sooner than the majority of viewers of the show. <laughs> um, but viewers do warm up to him, I promise. Well, um, I could definitely see it because, like, I mean, like you were saying, like, while he is such a jerk and it's like so blatant, I think some of that like blatancy makes it is that a word? Blatancy? I don't know if that's a word. I don't know. I don't I'm just know. making up words now. 
Yeah. But like that so like in your face makes it also quirky. And yeah. so like it's, it's kind of like the fact that Jack, the most lovable thing about Jack is the fact that he is brusque. Like he does not right. say nice things to people. So yeah. once you get to know Rodney and he's more than like a one episode <sighs> asshole, that the the intensity of his disdain for everyone would become yeah. endearing. Yeah, like I could definitely see, it. and like it's almost like I don't know if this is how his character is going to develop, but he could almost feel like a comic relief type character with his quirkiness, and so he's a little more like, a little more. He brings a little more levity, even though like he is talking about serious things, and he does know like life and death, and he's yeah you know, maybe talking about the serious like science behind everything, but like he just he feels like he has a little more levity than the other characters too sometimes, yeah. and so I feel like he's going to be. Whether or not I fall in love with him in the future, um, never as bad as someone like Simmons, who just is always unlikable. And you know, it's oh, always yeah. nothing. It has no redeeming quality, has no quirkiness. Oh, like, none. um, but yeah. So I could I could see coming around similar to like Mayborn, but quirkier. Yeah. Who is your MVP? Oh yeah. Um, you know, I think Daniel Jackson. I like, was I was hoping you didn't say that because I was gonna pick that. But no, no, but so why why are you picking Daniel? He like blew it out of the park. I mean, those negotiations, it's like he went to law school, like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He's so smart. And like it's and it is kind of nice, like, well, even though I said like it kind of felt a little bit out of character based on his last few seasons, like it is nice seeing him like in his element and like yeah. being beneficial and not just being the like fourth person that's there for sometimes reading weird symbols like it's nice to see him like actually being beneficial too yeah um because you picked daniel and that was my number one pick i'm gonna pick uh mayborn because he risked um public execution again just to not only warn sgc and help them but make sure jack knew it wasn't him who like besties stabbed him in the back yeah uh, they need like that. a secret like um like bat phone but like just like, for the two of them yeah yeah for and sure so, yeah yeah so that was that was my birthday special the the Dr. Ryan in the case special. Um, Very exciting. That was like a birthday episode. It's nice. Um, um, we do have quite some time, unfortunately, before I get Rodney back. Um, but I'm sorry for your loss. Actually, no, not that long. Rodney will be back this season. No. What's what here are we at? We only have like ten episodes left of the season. Yeah. Ryan, we We're second half season. Yeah. Um we will the next time we get to see Rodney, we it will be June. Are we what are we we're jumping to something after the season, right? What is no. our schedule? No, no, no. Um again? Yeah, no. Um <laughs> the next the next time we take a break from just going in order is um after season seven four five six seven we're doing together gotcha gotcha, gotcha. so we have two more seasons and then yeah job. yeah so okay, okay. rodney's next episode is this is the beginning of season six so he will be back um, oh he's not he's right yeah that's quarter. what i said i said he doesn't he doesn't he's not in the rest of the season but he's he's coming it's back a much soon. shorter span than many characters have had correct episodes correct yeah. Basically next week. Um, but okay. some 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 big things will happen between now and then. It, we have eight more episodes this season, but none of them are small. I mean, I'm anticipating. You've been talking at the darkness of the season and the craziness of the season. And Doug's very excited about his favorite episode this season. So yeah. like, I'm on the edge of my seat waiting. I mean, to, to be come. fair, a lot of the season, one of the reasons the season's so dark is because a lot of it does focus not on aliens, but on like how fucked up the government is. Sure, That's been a yeah. huge part of this season. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Totes. Totes. Well, 
if you have thoughts, theories, uh, questions, um, things that you think I should put in an email to David Hewlett, uh, please reach out to us at deafandaliens at gmail.com or on any of the if social you know media. David Hewlett, please connect us directly. Please. Um, or you can follow us on any of the social media at Death and Aliens. You can follow me everywhere at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can find me at C-E Cloud 13. With that, we will see you on Thursday for the American Horror Story Asylum finale. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.